how how does redesign how can it in, impact your website traffic um you know and i think this is something that not all web designers think about mm -hmm. um <laughs> you know uh there's a term we use where seo built in is something we would say uh, when we're talking to new clients right because it's something we think about from the beginning mm -hmm. so some people that design really beautiful websites that are for all for the design and not necessarily the function yep. um you know could have a negative impact on your mm -hmm. site traffic exactly. um where something that's well thought out with well organized um site structure well written content um should dramatically improve and jace you kind of lead up most of the dev team what are some things that your dev team does that right off the bat that works with your seo team and stuff that we would have done right up front yeah well i mean the the biggest thing is is if we have content on there that is working we're not going to modify that very much at all you know um if there's things we can elaborate more on, you know, maybe we'll add some stuff in there stuff. But if it's working, we're not going to take away from that. So um, we're going to try to keep, you know, the same structure. I mean, I kind of look at a, a website as a, a paper you write for college, right, um, or school or whatever you're writing for. You know, you got you got your title, you got your section split up, which we would utilize as H tags, um, you know, H twos and stuff like that. So um, keeping it a good structure, but all at that same time, not not messing up what was there, keeping the content right, but keeping it structured to where Google can read, crawl through your site and read it as theoretically, I look at as, as a paper that's written, that, that they can know exactly what section's going on there, what's supporting that section, the keywords that are intertwined with all that as well. Um, so it's just bas basically making sure we're not wrecking anything that's there um, and then making sure that we're, we're – updating and in enhancing the user experience within the modern trends and all and all those kind of aspects as well so when you're doing a redesign um is are there things you've worked with the seo team that we've learned that affects search traffic based when you make a change on a layout um uh, and the design is there, have you found where there's things that have had a positive or negative impact on based on the design and way you guys develop it yeah, I mean, you could look at even in the recent uh, last year, even, you know, we got, there's certain ways that how we do things and there's certain ways everyone throughout the whole web does things in, the, in their website and stuff like that. But there's things that uh, we have done that, you know, we have the data that shows that has worked in the past that now we're starting to see some changes in with how Google likes to see things laid out, especially when it comes to mobile, mm -hmm. um, you know, as the, the traffic's way higher on there nowadays uh, in comparison to the past. So, um, you know, there's aspects that we may have had, might have had towards the top of the page that Google now sees that, ah, well, that's kind of pushing the content down that we're seeing that we like a little bit more that we suspect a user is going to want. So let's, re you know, we should probably rearrange those things to make it to where that the content is there in front of the user's eye quicker and faster and, and kind of matches up within that content flow mm -hmm. um, that I was talking about, kind of like with the, you know, the paper aspect or however you want to look at it. But um, yeah, there's just things you got to pay attention to. You can't just let things sit there and then revisit it in a year and a half. You know, keep up to date with the analytics, keep up to date with uh, what Google's putting out there or, or any of these other um, search engines or stuff like that that they're wanting. But um, yeah, if you just let it sit there and, <laughs> you know, hope to goodness that things are just going to work over time, kind of shooting yourself in the foot if it goes, you know, the changes are drastically kind of necessary or. Or yeah, hurt your, your UX. So what you had mentioned is content above the fold. Yep. You know, and it used to yep. be it was looked at more so on a desktop, right? If yeah. your your content had to be above the fold on a desktop, then they switched to the mobile first index. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't see up until recently we didn't see a big change if that content was just started on the fold on mobile. But now we've seen it to where. We need that content to start above. And, and people don't know what the fold means. The fold means when you first load the website, like you go to, you land on the website for a roofer, roofing page, whatever, and it would be like where paragraphs start and you start seeing content. So if the only thing you see there is a logo and a picture, um, that's what Google sees as the f user's first experience. Yep. And they think that is a low user experience because there's not enough content there. So we have to start moving that content further and further up that page so when it loads on mobile, they're seeing 
text, not just pictures or not just navigation. It's got to be some type of useful text that has to do with what the searcher is looking for. Yep. So that'd be that if, if so if that's done wrong, right? Your designer's not taking that into consideration. You could just do a simple redesign without touching content at all, mm-hmm. not touching any of the SEO at all. And you technically could see over time loss of web rank, mostly yep. because they're going to index it based on mobile first layout. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, any other things that can in redesign and affect site traffic? I mean, you know, doing those redesigns, we're talking about those technical SEO aspects. If you have a designer that doesn't know anything about SEO, it can, like, if they don't have the page titles the same way they used to be, now they're just, you know, auto-generated. Or yeah. we've seen it where they will have it on a dev site and they'll have a no index on the site. And when they put it live, they're not consider- considering SEO. That site will lose all its rank because it's telling Google not to even look at this page because they're just web designers who aren't looking at an SEO aspect. Yep. There's things you can do to really screw it up. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a customer, cl- former customer, that switched to a, a cousin who runs an agency. Mm-hmm. So switched to this cousin. And we had this client ranking number one for probably dozens of keywords in Minneapolis for their service and that they switched over and that's they did exactly that they left the no index no crawl on it for three months oh no i mean you could google the company's name and you couldn't even find them oh man but they must have felt it in their sales right because eventually it got fixed and the only only way things like that get fixed if someone calls their web designer and says hey ever since we switched to your websites my phone stopped ringing right yeah. that's the only way that gets found yeah yeah um and but that that's truly that that, that that stuff actually happens and you hire someone that doesn't know what they're doing and they don't take seo into consideration you think it's just a redesign and everything's just toast but yeah, you, yeah but the redesign you know it's <laughs> you gotta kind of look at it as you know it's the beginning of another you know birth okay kind of look at it like, like of a website but the, the design is just as important as the content. The content is just as important as SEO, um, all those aspects. If you look at one as a higher need over the other, it's, you know, you're going to have those hiccups that just mm-hmm. happened right there. And that's an awful big hiccup that, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at people's, uh, you know, living right there with losing. <laughs> yeah. And, and then so. um, this is another thing we train developers when they come in that there's certain things we do as well right off the bat. Um, so, there's two ways that SEO works, right? One way you hire a designer who makes the site. They set it up over here. Then you hire an SEO company over here who comes in and undoes all the mess the designer created, and they almost will take a full year. You're going to pay this guy $1,000 a month for a year to fix all the crap that the web designer didn't do right to begin with, right? Yep. So when we hire a developer, the first thing we teach them is how to put in alternate image tags, how to, how to structure the content with header tags, right? How to, how to put in link titles and image titles and all these little things behind the scenes that most people, or even how to name the image, right? Just, <laughs> just the file name, Simple things like just that. little things that help with image search, yep. right? Um, that we, we do right off the bat. Um, and then like our SEO people, Jared, Brittany, they don't have such an uphill battle to climb. The no. day we launched that site, we, we, they, they clean up a few things, yep. right? Cause they're more versed in the keywords they're yep. going after, but that they have a much, I mean, we're talking like an afternoon, yeah, right? Not a full year of, of undoing someone's wrongdoings. Yep. Um, so I don't know, any other ideas of how a redesign alone can affect your uh, SEO or site traffic? Well, I mean, you got also got to consider the traffic that's already coming there. Mm. Now, a lot of times with a redesign, if it's an old, not great looking site, that traffic's just going to drop off. That bounce rate's usually really high. 60s, 70s, 80s percent. So you're just wasting that traffic in, in, in essence. So by increasing that, getting that bounce rate down is just going to lead to utilizing that traffic that you're already getting. You know what I mean? Mm. So you're just going to see a huge increase right away by people not leaving the site. Yeah. Which kind of goes right into our next topic, um, which is how do you convert more leads with a website redesign, <laughs> right? 
I mean, I think it kind of intertwines right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it comes down to the UX. It comes down to did you modify SEO tactics within that during the redesign, you know, for the good or the worse. Um, so, I mean, there's just you got to plan. You got to plan it out. You can't just, you know, throw it a new design. You got to have a, a plan that, that interlocks and intertwines with all the other aspects so you don't hurt yourself mm-hmm. ultimately. Yep. So, Nick. Converting more leads on a website redesign. What are the, give me some ideas of things that maybe some designers skip that we always do that just by adding it alone to your new design website will take that 80% bounce rate and maybe convert more of those sure. people into sticking around. Well, here's one thing. Like, let's say you're, a lot of com- times companies that are just starting out, they go the cheap route when they first do their first web design, right? What that oftentimes means is when they built this, they made it very generic. They're using stock photography. Mm. They're not taking their time writing the content. It's a v- very generic site that anybody could have. Yep. It could belong to the company down the street. You don't know. There's no personalization to it. That comes in with trust factors. Trust factors, when someone lands on your site, they get a feel for you. They trust your company. That leads to, is probably one of the biggest increases in conversion you can make. Having photos of you, your vehicles, your the people you work for you. Mm-hmm. Things like that, that is personalizing it just makes people trust you. They're going to click that button. They're going to they're gonna call you right away. It's just, that's the, probably the biggest thing that I see is between kind of a crappy website versus something that's actually going to convert. Yeah. How about a phone number? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are, your, are your calls to actions actually there? Yeah. We kind of have a rule with us that there, he needs to be con- CTAs, calls to action on every section of the site. Mm. So net, no matter what, no matter where they are on the site, no matter where they're scrolling, somewhere in that section, they have a way to contact you. It's not buried in a, uh, you got to go to the footer to a contact page, and then that's how you contact yep. you. That, that's making it way too hard for yeah. people to contact you. You know, so having that phone number, and not just a phone number. A lot of people say, I only want calls. But maybe someone doesn't want to call you. I don't, after hours. I don't want to talk to you. Maybe they would just want to <laughs> go on that form and click you and just Absolutely. send you an easy email. Yep. Because you they, they want to have you come to them on their own time. You know what I mean? So having both ways to do it means there's some people, some people are passive, some people are more aggressive and want mm-hmm. to talk right now. Yeah. You need to have both for different types of users that land on your site. Mm-hmm. So that's another huge thing too, yeah. Yeah. And just even how those call to actions, like, you know, speak to, to, different, to different people. You know, you're going to have different verbiage that you're going to use in those call to actions. You don't want to get repetitive, like the same request a quote over here, request a quote, request. Well, maybe someone um, is feels better when they hear free quote. Maybe yep. somebody here likes to hear better, get your roof quote today. You know, instead of just the same thing over and over, use a, a different verbiage to, to how do you say it? Exp- get the, the, the get story. the same point across. Yeah, the same point across. Um, because everyone is going to have different things that attract them or pull them in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I would say another thing could also is building out your site to portray the service, all the services that you that yeah. you do. Um, so, you know, there's some of it. This trend has somewhat gone away, and Google has gotten better at getting around this. But some people like the single page websites or. You have a services page that has a, just a bullet point list of all the services you provide. And that doesn't seem, Nick was talking about trust factors, but if you're, um, if you just have a bullet point list of services versus a page about, you know, stump grinding, yeah. right? You might treat it as, you might see it as a tree service company, but if you don't, if you can't find the stump grinding service, you're like, oh, I'll just go to the next guy, right? So that's yep. where your bounce rate comes in because they don't explicitly know. They're not being told directly that, yes, we do what you're looking for. Here's the page on it. And if, you, if your site's done right with SEO and they search for a stump grinding company, right, yep. they're going to land right on that page. Um, and that is going to get you more leads because yep. they know they're in the right spot. There's no reason to leave. They have the trust factors from Nick. The phone number's on the top. They have a get a free quote. Right. Um, and that's that's a big pet peeve of mine is when you see people with a, a website where it's like you look at the header. So when it lo- opens it on the phone, the only thing you see is like their social icons, Ugh. but you can't see their phone number. Like, do you really mm, yeah. want them to hit the Facebook page and go just 
that's distraction land. Well, then I'm, You'll never then get them back. I'm chatting with my buddy from yeah, Montana, exactly. too. You know? Exactly. So, exactly. Then I can forget what's going on. Yeah. I mean, the social icons, slam them in the bottom. I mean, no one cares about them. Well, on those social Whatever. thing, you know, those aspects, those are there to get people to your site. Use yeah. that as an avenue to your site. It's not there to send them out. You know? Exactly. So. Yeah. Any other thoughts on converting more leads? Yeah. I mean, it, for me, it's just, you know, when it comes to the content, you, and you, you know, just people want things fast. They want it. They want it to be simple, and they want it to be clean. And if you're making it, um, you know, hectic for them or hard for them to search, I mean, when I'm on the phone, we're lazy. You know, we want we want the simplicity. Um, so you got to look into that stuff when you're doing redesigns or just in general the UX. It's got to be it's got to be there for the user, not per se to how you may like it as a company. You know, mm-hmm. you you know your employees are not going to be on there calling. You, well, they might be calling for a service if it depends what the service is, but the users are going to be where you're going to be wanting to get the stuff. So you need to pay attention to them more than what you're necessarily wanting. Yeah, to that point, we're talking about content and writing out content. Another aspect of that is people don't actually read. No, they don't read large sections of paragraphs. That yeah, they're yeah. not. I mean, maybe some people do because they're really trying to dig in. But usually they're not going to, if you hide some key details in a big paragraph, then nobody's going to see it. No. That's why you need to have small chunks, bullet points. We call them your UVP sections where the biggest things you want that user to know should be right there in an easy-to-read section, bold, bold font. This is the main reason you should contact me right yep. here. Boom. Don't stick it in a paragraph. Don't bury it all the way down the page. People, yeah. people's, yep. time, people's attention is like that these days. Yeah, well, it goes just like to you can use utilize heat mapping software. You can see where viewers drop yeah. off, you know, further down your scroll, they're it's, gone, and it's per, <laughs> and it's not very far. No, it's not very far. So you got to get those key those key pulling, you know, unique value props to them. What's going to pull them in to to hit this call to action button right here? I don't want them scrolling down here trying to figure some more. That's Google food, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want that kind of stuff. So you, you got to deliver quick. That goes with the quick aspect and make it simple.